So, Ian, was this expected? Give us the uh, background to all this. Yes, it very much was expected, Mark. Now, of course, Jack Dorsey was one of three uh, people who founded uh, the business back in uh, 2006. He was ousted previously as chief executive back in 2008 when a previous board director, Fred Watson, said that he was unfit to lead the company. Uh, Twitter then had a, a full-time CEO in Dick Costello. He left in 2015, and that was when Jack Dorsey made his return. Now, since then, Twitter shares have risen by some 85%, not a bad performance over six years, you might think, but they've fallen by about a third during the last six months, and that has uh, not gone down terribly well with investors. Now, the other key factor here is that Jack Dorsey is currently chief executive of not one company, but two, he's also CEO of Square, which is a fintech company. It's substantially bigger than Twitter. Twitter's market cap at the moment is around $37 billion, while Square's market cap is some $97 billion. So clearly, if he was forced to choose between one of those two companies, he's going to go for Square, the larger of the two. And that's a choice that a lot of shareholders have been urging him to make. A couple of years ago, he had a row with Elliott Investment, which is one of the most feared activist investment investors on the block. They took a share in the business. They urged him to choose between Square and Twitter. At that time, he bought them off by giving them boardroom representation, along with Silver Lake, which is a big US private equity company that was also agitating for change. But it seems that uh, the main obstacle really was coming up with a successor for him. They've now done that. They're replacing him with the chief technology officer. A share price having risen by 10%, as you said earlier, that was on reports of his departure. It's now only up 1.5%.